The tournament is where Cinderella stories begin and big wins happen on the biggest stage. With Gambat DC, you could make your Cinderella story a reality. Take advantage of new player bonuses online and in app or play in person for boosted parlays. You can bet on all 63 games, even if your bracket's busted, and play from the edge of your seat with exciting in-game bets. Make your bets now with Gambet DC. Terms and conditions apply. Please play responsibly. Hey, guys. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. And trust me, guys, it works. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And the best of all, it is totally free. Yes, totally free. So download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. I don't know. I mean, who's... Uh, oh, I was just going to use the um, the different one, the different uh, website, because like, like right now I'm using Microsoft Teams. I mean, I have my phone right here, so... Hi. And... Uh, I mean, I've got it on I, my phone, too, but... Yeah, cause, and then, because once you said it was freezing, I'm like, well, it keeps freezing... Then I'll just try to do um uh I think it's like Riverside. I used it before with Adriana and I don't know if it was just her connection or my connection or the website. It was being a little bit funky, so I wanted to use Microsoft Teams. Um but right I just but I'm just gonna keep that as like the backup website. So if obviously like in your case, if it's too heavy and tense for a computer because it's like an app, a heavy app, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it could be an issue, I don't think. And if not, I can always go take my husband's uh, computer. Uh, I, I, know, I, have, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we have uh, two of those. I mean, hey. He yeah, was I mean. a, a dual PC system. Mm hmm. Because you're you don't live in Minnesota anymore, do you? No, I live in Dutchie City in Kansas. Oh, so you live in Kansas? Yeah, the army took me here. <laughs> oh, like, are you currently like in like I guess I know you're like in, are you I know you're employed I guess by the army, but like no, I'm active duty full time. I do oh, army shit, army shit every day. Oh, there you go. Hey. Did they provide you an apartment, or did you have to go get one on yourself? We went. So when you join, when you get uh, put to the duty station. You can either, if you're married, of course, you can either get on base housing, which they'll give you a house, and but they'll take away your BAH, and then um. Or you can get your own housing off post, which is what I did. I live off post because I didn't want to be on post with all their weird shit there. That was too army for me. Yeah. I mean, most most of your neighbors are in the military or prior military, but they're not all high speed. Mm, I see. I see. Right now. Uh, do I sound okay? Do I look okay? Before we like just keep talking, do I? <laughs> the hair looks great. It looks long. I need to. I need to get a haircut bad, <laughs> like bad. Um, I've been just super, super stressed and super busy that I just, I just haven't had legit any time. Because um, right now I'm working at Target, and. Yeah. Yeah, I work because I live in Lincoln. So right now I'm working at Target, and I was doing my classes for to be a real estate agent to get my real estate license, mm -hmm. to know the world of real estate. And you know, it's uh, let's just say it's a, a lot of work. I still don't even know what I'm doing. I'm done with classes. I just have to wait and do, um, like my big final test. 
mm-hmm. with the state. Well, there's 12 of them that I have to do. The general, like, real estate, and then the state-specified stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to do a lot of uh, studying. I'm just tell yeah. you that. A lot. I did a practice... Because what, what I do... Well, what the, what the school that I'm doing it with, what they do is... They do topics, like they do the summary of every topic. They give you a topic exam after every topic. And then on the next tab, they give you like practice, like big practice exams that you can do. And you can take as much time as you need to. Um, And so with the topic exams, what I want to do first is see how much I know every topic before I go to the summaries and write them down. And let's just say, yeah, I need to really, I need to really study. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. Okay. Because I've been doing it since April, like mid-April, and I just got done with all the classes now. Mainly for it being my fault, because in the beginning, I took it so slow. Like, because they do um, units. So think of it as like, here's here's this class. And then here's your big ass workbook, and you know, with like every unit. Instead, what I do, because what I do now, or what I guess what I did, do whatever, was I do anywhere from half of a unit to a full unit in about a day. If I did half, I'd finish a unit into obviously the full one, or whatever. But before, I'd do like every like section. There was so much section sections. I mean. And then subsection, so it could say, like, like unit one, real estate terms, and then here's like, like land use controls, and then here for one section, and then here's a bunch of other subsections that you'd have to know that all are in the land use, and I, I would do like that only that land use control, and then the next day move on to the next one, and it w- it took so fucking long. Yeah, it's I mean, it's so a long. Lot. That's yeah. a lot. It took so long, and it's a uh, you have to have two, well, three classes all equaling sixty six hours. The second class, which is the Nebraska law, which is thirty hours, took me about two two and a half weeks to complete. Yet the first uh, module, the <laughs> the I guess like the general real estate that took me two months because of how slow I was going. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's and they said, it, it, yeah. And they said that it takes anywhere from two to four months. But when I was looking, when I was looking at it, when I was doing it and I'm like, I'm two months in and I haven't even been, I'm, I'm barely getting done with module one. Like at this rate, I'm going to get done in like, six eight months well i'm gonna have to pick up the speed and so i yeah. did and yeah so now i just gotta wait for the background check because i had to do the fingerprint and just fucking study my ass off background checks uh i hate this the, yeah when yeah. uh oh i guess you can say i took it i took it more serious uh, cause my girlfriend and I, we went to a realtor career day in Omaha where it just mm-hmm. basically talks about, you know, what to do, whatever. And going there was a good, I guess you can say opportunity because it, I guess, I guess it opened my eyes. Like it, op- like it opened of, you know, if I truly want to be doing this, I can't. Take it. I can't take it. I mean, take it at your own pace. Don't try to rush yourself. But it's like I don't want to do a like I'm laid back, being lazy, taking it slow, and not focusing, taking it slow. And mm-hmm. and I also will open my eyes because like the man, the team manager that that uh, I saw for the event said that his wife made about three hundred grand last year. I'm like, if you if you're able to make doctor and surgeon money with the license I'm like 
and also all these like financial YouTubers that I saw. Cause I love YouTube, by the way. <laughs> I'm like seeing all that. I'm like, I'm gonna have to put. I'm gonna have to push it. Like, I get so little well, effort into it. Yeah, cause it's not one of those things where you're paid hourly. You're paid salary. It's you're technically starting your own business, so you gotta go and put in that work. Yeah, yeah. that's why a lot of real estate take that stuff really seriously. My uh, uh, one of the people I work with, I work under them. Their husband, he just got his dealer to license and everything like that. And when he gets out, him and his husband are going to move down to Georgia and start realtor there. But he's going to send his husband down to Georgia a year before he gets out so he can get mm-hmm. set up and start selling houses and stuff. Because it takes uh, a lot it, of work. It takes a lot of work yeah. from being a barber to a realtor. Yeah, like it's a, it's a lot because technically you're self-employed. An independent mm-hmm. contract. You have to, you have to go out there and get the money. Because what I want to do is obviously be a realtor, but then also be doing with YouTube and the podcast. So I have different streams of income, and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And because I dropped out of college after my first year, because I realized um, it wasn't what I, you. yeah, well, because what I wanted to do which was that first computer science. I'm like, oh, you know, computer science, blah, blah, blah. Once I got in, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Not only did I have to take... This is one thing that probably that pissed me off, is um, when I wanted to do computer science, you know how military is like, oh, you know, you got your certain requirements. But what pissed me off with military was most of the requirements they based off of was mainly like WCC or Shadron, maybe EWC, never no one else. Because when yeah, I was, went, what was it? Because they're so, that's one of the closest colleges to them. They're not going to reach out to all these other colleges, especially for how small the school is. Like if they were Scotts Bluff or Gearing or Sydney even, they probably based it off of a lot more. But because mm-hmm. of how small they were, they didn't really care to go out there. Yeah, they're like, we don't get, almost, I guess, in a way, they're kind of like, you know, like, we're not even going to bother even, like, going out there because, you know, like, we don't even know if you're even going to make it, so just stay here, which I'm not saying it's bad to be at a community college. I'm not saying that's bad, um, but it's like, I wanted to be out of that town. Like, the, the town is so yeah, fucking toxic. Way, yeah. It's so fucking toxic. I'm like, I want to get out of that town. I went, I went back for a visit because I, I haven't seen home for like a year and a half, right? It's mm-hmm. very uh, very white trash now. Yeah. I was very. like, where, where are all the Hispanics that I grew up with? Like, why is, this, why is there nobody partying down the street? I'm like, this yeah. is not... I went to the fire department, which is like right behind my house. And mm-hmm. it was just... No! I'm like, I walked in there, I walked out a little bit. And I was busy as long as I could, and then I went back to the backyard. And my dad was like, what's going on? Why did you stay a little bit longer? I was like, I couldn't, Dad. He was like, wow, this is so white trash. I'm like, yeah. this is not, this is not my town. <laughs> I, yeah, I it's... didn't want to no more. Mm-mm. It's, Mm-mm. it's definitely done a 360, even from last year, about like a year and a half ago. Yeah, like it has changed so much, and that's why. And the school um... system's not that great anymore either. Be honest. A, a lot of the teachers have left too. Did you uh, hear Kaisha the teacher there now? What was that? Kaisha? Kaisha? Yeah, over in where? I think it's Moral, right? No, Minotaur. Oh, she's a math teacher in Minotaur? Mm-hmm. I thought she was Moral. Or no. is that what she was doing her like hours? I think so. I haven't talked to her. I just heard from my sister that she's a math teacher. Ah, at the Minotaur High School. Mm hmm. Because Gifford's leaving. What? Yeah. Damn, Kaisha's being there now. I feel bad for her. It's, like, I, I've i seen that system. It's going, it's it's bad now. Like, yeah, like, the way my sister was telling me, she's not, it's not that great anymore. I think, um, the, I don't know what's going on anymore. It's terrible. You do, like, four days a week of school, and everything yeah like it's um so i know what they told us 
um, academic for my class academic wise we were the last good class and then uh the one then the class that graduated after us was like caleb and Jalissa and cesar and them they were the last like good class like they were also high up there for academics but they were like the last good class to be leaving because then after that it was just downhill and yeah it's very downhill yeah no hate to the recent graduates and everything and then everything else but it yeah i've seen it it's my a lot different. Me. the town feels weird that i went uh recently not well not like so so recent but a couple months ago recent um mm-hmm. uh, i went down and even walmart i went to fucking walmart and it's not different it, like, I, not just because of the renovation, because the Walmart's here. Because we have four Walmarts. They're oh. all getting renovated. So it's not like I'm not used to a renovation. Mm-hmm. But being there, it could be that I've worked there for, like, two and a half years. But even then, I walked in. I'm like, it, I don't know. Like, I kind of, like, had a gut feeling of kind of, like, don't, you shouldn't be here. Like, you shouldn't be in this Walmart. Like, don't even be here. Yeah, I went down there because I had, like, I was bored and I had a tie on my hand, and I went over there to, like, just walk around, see people, or see if I've seen anybody. Only person I see was a long boyfriend because he works for it, and that was it. I've seen nobody else. I've seen, like, all these group people walking in and out. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know this crowd anymore. I don't know this stuff. I don't really care. It's just, it's weird to me. Like, it's. Even the even the target was different and the mall felt weird, like the mall feels was, empty, like yeah. It was just weird. Emptier there. than it used to be, yeah. Yeah, it's it's in a, in a way um sad and like what the hell? And it's not the best thing. Even the I didn't even know they put a bridge over the highway, the walk bridge. Uh-huh. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, they did the, I know when I visited, they were, um, I think close to finishing it when I, when I went over there last, like the, the closest time I went there, but I know now it's been done. I don't know yeah. how long it's been done now, but it's been done. I drove under it. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And, uh, and it, and the weird thing is like, um, uh, class wise, like my class, as far as I know, <laughs> technically, out of the guys, no, like, guy-wise, I don't know if you would consider me a student, like, still in school, real estate school, so I don't know how much of that would be considered, like, me being a student, but I guess college-wise, there's, guy-wise, no one, no one is in college right now. Gary and I believe moved to Arizona. Uh, obviously, I'm in Lincoln. Not permanently, just temporarily right now. I um, did get to school. Um, yeah, I've been Ephraim. Ephraim. He just got out of jail? Yeah, not too long ago. Jesus. So, when like I was that. still living there, Ivan and Ephraim were staying at my place because Ivan was homeless and Ephraim was always around. So, technically, Ivan was staying at his place. Because I do, I didn't, I felt bad for him like staying on the streets. I didn't want him to not have a home, so I let him stay with me. And he I was regret homeless? that. Yeah, it it wasn't the best decision. Like he was like, I need a place to stay, and I see the Snapchat, and I just got the apartment, like I signed the lease, and I had an extra room, so I was like, mm-hmm. okay, you know, I can I can have the other person living here, right? But. I'll say it's our best decision, but after that, I think we, when I had to leave, because I left to go live in Florida with my current husband, um, when I had to kick him out, he went to go back to his parents' house, and I think after that, he really made a life change, because he's doing a lot better now than he was before. He's good. doing great. He's doing good for himself. He's got his own apartment and everything. Why? Why was he homeless? I don't know. I think he had issues with his um, parents, and they wouldn't let him over there anymore. Damn. Yeah. Again, see, when, like it, it hasn't even been that long, and look how much it's already been changing. It's like, it's fucking crazy. It's sad yeah, in it a is, way. It is crazy. Yeah, I think most of the class. I haven't really talked to most of the class. Like I talked to JC, 
I just seen Adam a little bit ago. Adam is doing great. He's doing great. I'm not getting sure his he, business. He's in, he's in Carney. Oh, he lives in. Oh, he's in Carney now. Oh wow! He's, Last time when I knew him, he was working at the Torrington prison as a correctional officer. Yeah, he was doing that for a while. He did great with that, and then he's he's doing good with his current job. I, I'm really proud of that guy. He's probably one of those achieving ones in my class. Him, he's he's doing great. I know JC. He lives in Omaha, right? Yeah. yeah. He's great. Um. Gilbert's you know, obviously. Gilbert's doing good. Doing <laughs> Gilbert's doing awesome. So yeah, Gilbert's doing Gilbert. You know, I think he's just he's Gilbert. Engaged. He's engaged. I've seen him Are all. You going? To... Did he invite you? No. He didn't invite you. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> That's fine though. I don't have time for a wedding. I probably won't go to go home anyways. I mean, I I had to put in the days off because I'm like I'm going. I mean, <laughs> I can't. Yeah. My... Because my didn't... cousin uh, from Al- Albuquerque, uh, they invited me to th- their wedding. However, I got the invitation. I don't know if they sent it out late or I just received it late because it arrived about like two weeks ago and the wedding was like the end of July. And I'm like, oh. uh, I'm like I can't just get the days off now because the schedule's up. I can't. Tell them, hey, I'm, you know, I'm gonna have to leave because they're gonna say, well, you should have put it up. It's like, well, not my fault. This arrived late, and so I couldn't go. But like Gilbert's, um, since it was through Facebook, obviously, like he sent out really early, so I was able to put in the days. Yeah. Hopefully, it gets approved. But yeah, it's it's just. It's I just say, so I'm glad he's getting married, though. Yeah, you know, he, it's just his fiance seems really nice. I, I've seen her too. They're both super successful. They're both hardworking motherfuckers. Like, yeah, they are. They're successful as hell. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what like, the rest of the class is going on with. I just, I know it's you. Like, I don't. I, I don't like, touch I anybody. To... Like, I was gone on the plane with for nine months and no one messaged me, no one talked to me, no one said, hey, how are you doing? Nothing. I mean, that's how it is. After I graduated, I literally have not been talked to by any one of my class. Legit, no one of my class. And it's I even... I think the only ones that's been contact with me were Alex, of course, um, Adam, and JC. Yeah, my class, I had didn't... legit no one. Like zero. <laughs> no one. <laughs> no one. And, yeah, like, literally. And that's why I was like, damn. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that, that was really a know. floor, right? <laughs> I'm like, damn, did I really not mean shit to anyone? And I didn't want to be that person that would want to text them. Um and you know, kinda kinda be like a beg like begging them, like, oh hey, you know, I gotta wanna be seen like that. And but I I just don't like how how it is over there. I'm glad I've moved. I'm glad I'm gone. Um, yeah, I'm glad the army uh, took me away. <laughs> God, I remember when you wanted to do it so bad, and the they didn't get you because of your weight, and then you surprisingly were like hustled at it, grinded at it. Oh, yeah, I yeah, started like there. when I started the, like when I started trying to lose weight, it wasn't working, and then like somehow from the kitchen I just started dropping weight and I was like okay you know I'm like I was happy with it I started working I worked at like Safeway for a little bit and then I worked at uh Main Street Market I worked in the liquor store and like when I started working in Safeway I got hit up by an army recruiter and um he was like hey you ever thought about doing the military I was like yeah I was like, I'm not sure. He's like, well, why don't you come here? We'll sleep with me and we'll talk about it. And then right then, then you know, the army got my ass. I mean, hey, <laughs> they got your ass, but hey, they were able to get you. Yeah, I was like, you know, I got nothing else going for me right now. I'm not going to be able to go to college. I don't have a car, you know. Fuck it. A good way to start my life. And look at you now. How was that? How... 
in a way, were you nervous when you had to go? Did they make you go to basics? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Every did, uh, army community goes to basics. How was that? Like, we, <laughs> so on your way I there, went, were you nervous? On my way there, yes, because I had to leave my husband. We just got married like a week before that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I went like the H. <laughs> yeah. Damn, imagine that. You just got yeah. married in a week. You're like, bye. <laughs> Divorce, just kidding. <laughs> nah, uh, and then I went to be training in South Carolina. I'm hitting my two year anniversary this month. So I've been in for two years. Um, congrats, congrats. We came to South Carolina at Fort Jackson. It was humid as fuck. Oh, during uh, I went during COVID times, so Ooh. it wasn't as hard per se. It just it sucked. It wasn't the best. I think it could have been better. Um, especially and, since I mean, for the whole COVID, they probably had to restrict so much stuff. Yeah, like we couldn't do combat. So the end, like where we have this, um, it's called the FTX. It's the forge. It's like the last, last, you know, rock mark and uh, field. And mm. you, it's usually like a week long because you go out, you do combatives, you do like batons, like you do like, the cutest things. You get mm. a few people with that shit. It's fun. Um, we didn't, we didn't get to do any of that, so. It was just kind of, it kind of sucked because I didn't want to learn combatives. And at the time, we had a new PT test that was pushed on us because the old one was just pushed with sit ups and a two mile run. This one's got six different events. And it's, it's a lot. I mean, it's easy to pass, but it's hard to max out. Mm. So, like, you can't get the high score because you have to have 600 points to get the max score so it's hard to get there mm-hmm. um but you know it's easier for everybody to pass especially like if you are injured or disabled and you have to be on profile like a permanent profile which i'm going to be on soon because careful game um it's it's easier to be able to pass it too so, like, you can't get kicked out as long as you're passing the PC test. Well, that's good. Yeah. And then, so basically, are right. AIT was not the best. I was not like, I thought I was demanding and I was too high strung, I guess. I don't know. I just wanted to keep. I wanted to stay serious and I didn't relax, but I didn't know how to. I got so used to the, you know, straight edge of regular stuff that I was just like not, not relaxed. But it was easy. Like my class was really smart. We, no one got like below the 90 percentile. So like all the grades, we all got 90, 90s, 92s, 96s, 99s. I was like, Top of my class for most of the time, except for the last test, I got a 96 and it dropped me down. Damn. Come on, Emily. Come on, Emily. I did the test wrong, okay? It was the hands on portion. The hands on. The one that some people. Uh... I mean, it was easy. I just I overthought it and I am. Um... Yeah, I overthought it, overdid it. I hate when that happens. I that's how it was when I was taking my classes for real estate. Um, some of the stuff I just would overthink. I'm like, oh, this and this. And then I'm like, okay, maybe it's this one. And then I, me knowing, I feel like it's this one, but I don't know. I'm just gonna do this one. And then when I submit it, tells me my score. I go back and see which was wrong, and that's the one that was wrong because I chose the wrong answer. I'm like, fuck, it was that one. Like, damn oh, it. Okay. So it's ass. Yeah, I was, I was disappointed. I was like, I was top of my class. I was like number one. And I got dropped down to 12th place. 
12. But like there's a class of 30 people. Each each class is like 30 people or more. Probably so a big if, difference from a minute here. <laughs> 30 yeah. classes is already more than your actual whole entire like actual class. Graduating class, <laughs> yeah. I think my biggest class I took a minute to was 30 people in the two classes a uh, world history class. Oh my god, it was Mr. Fucking Foster. I love the guy. You let me fall asleep in his class because I got three days in his class. Damn, he let you fall asleep? Yeah, so I felt tired. Like I was like dipping out. He just didn't want to bother me. That's what he always said. He was like, if you're getting A's in my class, you're passing your test, you aren't failing, you aren't having like a D or a C. I don't care. <laughs> he was like, obviously, you're doing something right. So, <laughs> like, when he was like yeah. going on, it was going on and on and on with his stories. I just feel like shit. Or I would uh I'd be reading books on my iPad in this class. <laughs> this guy. I remember one day, um I forgot who pissed him off and he got serious. Like he we were going through notes and then the next day he apologized because he felt bad and then rambled on about his story and that was it. <laughs> that's uh, that's, Foster. that's Mr. Foster for you. That man, a legend, yeah. absolute legend. I wonder when he's gonna gra- uh not gra- graduate, uh, retire. Cause he said he wants to wait until the school hits his 100 year mark. So he got yeah. like four more years. Okay, I feel like he'll he'll be able to make it. Yeah, I think so too. He'll be able to make it. He needs his rest. They need to get a new high school teacher. Um, they just need to do a new high school. Bunch of they kids. need to renovate the whole. They need to renovate the whole place. Yeah. Mm. Fucking. Cause with cause what I want to do, um, just whenever it happens. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Right now or right tomorrow. Uh, depending on how the high school still is. If it's still the same people. Um, if let's say I got millions and millions of dollars, I'll donate a million bucks to that school. Um, but that's just depending that if let's say like, no, everyone that I do not know is, is there and everyone that I knew is gone. So fuck the high school. I don't know no one in there anymore. Yeah. I feel like I don't know anybody there at all anyway. Like I know, um, Oh, uh, Mayhew. Mayhew's leaving. Yeah. Well, I think she's gone now, I think, actually. Yeah, she, I've seen her when I was home. Because I was driving by where I used to... So my apartment that I used to live in was right down the street from Suzuki's house. And I was driving down there. And I drove right by, right by her house and she heard a garage sale. And then I was like, oh, this is Mayhew, this is Mayhew. I was like, what? And she was like, this is Mayhew. She's like, can we go see? She's retiring. I didn't get to see her. So like, okay. So she hops up the van and she's like, we were talking to Mrs. Mayhew and she left the next day. Dang. Yeah. She was on her way to Arizona. Oh my <laughs> god. So she really left. Yeah. She's she out of here. She said, skirt. Yeah. She's like, peace. And then uh, they got a new principal because Mr. Robbins is the superintendent. Oh, so Mr. Robbins got the superintendent job. Yeah, and there I think the new principal is Hispanic or something like that. Yeah, at least Mr. Robbins is doing good. Yeah, I heard uh, Haley is married to Graham. Graham, yeah. Saw that. I mean, I didn't get. I don't even talk to her. I didn't get invited at all. So I seen. I seen them when I was home, like because they never across the street from me. I seen them and she didn't wave or nothing. Yeah. I mean, I really don't give a shit. Like I wasn't there to see people. I just there to see my family. Yeah, I mean, that's all that mattered. Ever since we graduated, everyone changed. So. I don't really yeah. Give a shit. I did it. I don't really give a shit. If I see him out, out like at Walmart, if I'm visiting, and just say, "Oh, what's up? Hi, guy. Whatever." I get yeah, shy. I'm all hiding in the aisles. Walk away. I have social anxiety. 
Are you like in the army? Don't you have to deal with a lot of people? And I guess time to go fuck themselves. Hey, fuck it. We uh we lightly bully each other here. It's <laughs> just like fucking in high school. No, it's high fair. school is worse. They, I, I remember Actually, the uh, Darian. Darian would hit would. <laughs> Bully. Yeah. yeah, no, Derry was actually nice. <laughs> Super to these people. <gasps> One of the guys told me that I work with. So I am currently the only one of the only female mechanic in my entire motor pool. Like the ones that work on vehicles. So mm-hmm. I mean we have a couple other but I'm the only lower on the female. Mm-hmm. So I'm not here getting told I'm retarded. I got buck teeth and uh, I make a mess. So it's fun. We were yeah, um, sure. we were we were in Kuwait. That's where I got sent to. I was in the desert for like nine months. It was, it was terrible. I don't like shit. It was the worst. Anyway, the desert. I could not do that. No. Yeah, it was fine. Um, I got. Got paid more starting here. Um, do you get paid in, hourly or do you get paid salary? Salary. Salary. I get salary. paid the same amount every every two weeks, unless I have uh, allotments. Yeah. So on the first and the fifteenth, I get paid the same amount or same basis, unless I have money that's being taken out for like. Um, so I had to pay for my spouse's dental and my dependents' dental. But everything else is covered under my insurance. It's just dental that's not covered. So I have to pay like 30 bucks for the dental. That's probably good. For it being the army, you probably get like the best, probably like medical insurance, just insurance in general, we right? Get insur- no. We get this insurance, but we don't get the best doctors because they don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> These are like, here, ibuprofen and water. There you go. Also, like technically, could you since it's like insurance, could you be able to like, like head to an actual doctor, like to an actual yeah. like yeah. clinic? It, but you have to get a referral. Oh wow! <laughs> They're so, like, no, you gotta stay. You gotta do in, our shit. In deployment, <laughs> on deployment, when I was overseas, the doctors there were all military doctors, and I really couldn't go see anybody else, obviously. But here. The doctors at the hospital on base are pretty great. They do decent work. And off base, they're all right. So in in the States, the doctors are good. Unless you go to, like, the smaller clinics, which is, like, an urgent care, basically. Mm-hmm. Then they're all military doctors that are, like, I put them in water. Go take a stretch. I told them I had a hip issue, and they said, well, here's a... This is stretches you need to do. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really help you at all. Yeah, and now I have to have um, an orthopedic consultation and possible surgery. Damn. <laughs> Compare to that, do these stretches. Getting that VA money. Hey, fuck <laughs> it. I mean, because I know. Uh, they tell you, they tell you all the injuries you get, like if your back hurts, your head hurts, you sprain a rib. I did that. If you break a hip, you feel pain somewhere. Go to sit call. Tell them, tell them, be a whiny ass bitch. Because you know what? To go on your medical records, you're gonna get claimed. It. Like anything you can do to get that VA money, you do it. Fuck it. Don't purposely hurt yourself but first, you know? Yeah. I mean, fuck it, right? <laughs> I, so I was over there and I sprained a rib. Ow. Yeah, I don't know how I did it. What the hell? Uh, no. <laughs> Wait, I can be able to do any of that. I can be able to do that. Wait, give me dirty. <laughs> But hey, you're doing good though, right? You're making some, you're making great money though, right? Decent money, not great money, but decent. De- money. Oh, decent. Like enough to, enough to live in good means. Like I can afford decent stuff. Okay, well, I mean, like I mean, than... if I was a single soldier, I could be out here driving a scat pack at like five percent APR. But 
Yeah. I'm not a typical soldier. I have people relying on me. <laughs> a lot of people here, they just got past some Mustangs or GTs or Subarus. Like good Subarus, not no bitch ass Subaru. Uh, they're trying, it's just, they're just wasting that money. It's just fuck it, right? I mean, this car's gonna last in a while. It's gonna it blow them up. I know we're here driving a Dodge Caravan. Fuck it. I mean, <laughs> drive what you can because um, those vehicles, those scat packs and all that, sooner or later, they'll start losing value. And if they want to trade it in, they're not going to get the full value. Because my dream car, I've said it a lot, my dream car is a Tesla. Whether it be, I I know what you think, whether it be the Tesla Model 3 Performance Edition or Tesla Model S Plaid. But it's not just cause, but it's not because of oh it being electricity oh this oh that. At first I'm like eh, it just seems like a weird looking car. But let me tell you when I test drove one, oh my god I fell in love. Not only does that go very fast, the performance edition the Model Three, it goes from zero to sixty in three seconds. Wow. The Plaid yeah. edition the, the Tesla Model S Plaid edition goes from zero to sixty in two seconds. And when you do the math, and when you do the research, the Model 3 going 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, vehicles, in order for others to match that, you have to spend 100 k plus. That Tesla, after discounts, is like 55000 I'm so bad, actually. That, that yeah, bad. It, it's crazy fast. And... For how gas is and electricity is so because since Tesla has their own network, it's so fucking cheap. It and so it's like all that, and they rarely lose value because it's an electric vehicle. It's an expensive electric vehicle. If you have a 2020 and you want to get to 2022, you're gonna get almost the same value that you spent when you bought, like the same exact value that you bought it for. Maybe a little bit less, but you'll still get similar compared to. Compared to like with the Mustangs, all that, if let's say you spent 50, 60 on it, some places, some dealerships, they might give you a good, they might give you similar, but some might give you like 30, 40. And you're like, but I spent like 55. You're like, well, it only goes to 40. Yeah. Lose, it lost value, even if it's a year old, lost value. Yeah. And, and so it's just, that happens a lot. Yeah, and it's also it's not one it's not one of I don't want to get like the Tesla just to like once I'm able to work at it and get the money and able to buy it without it hurting me with I'm able to put a big chunk of a down payment without it but, yeah. hurting me like anything once I'm able to be having that money I don't want to be other people like yeah look at me driving a Tesla because I have money it's like you know what I worked for. To, look what I worked at. Look what I worked for to mm-hmm. get this vehicle. Like, like yeah. it, and um, same with like going to vacations. Like, I, like with clothing, I'll go to a Walmart, buy a fuck ton of clothing, and call that my clothing. Like, I'm not gonna yeah, be. I still have clothing ma- from like 2017 because I have not yet. But like, mm-hmm. I've been so busy with everything in my life. Like. I already graduated. I was working at the farm. I stopped doing that. I moved at my parents' house. I was grinding my ass. I was working 40, 50, 60 hour weeks at a fucking deli because we were we didn't have enough people. We didn't have a lot. Like as it was a struggle. I was really like busting my ass. I even got a pinch strip in my back. Like my back went numb. Like I couldn't stand. And I still went to work the next day on pain medication because they needed me. I mean, I could have quit. I did quit eventually. But, like, I worked there for eight months, and I worked a lot. I improved that deli so much. Mm-hmm. And I, mean, I didn't get a lot to show for it, but, like, I was able to pay my rent, pay my bills, get myself a nice bike, my back and forth for because I'm not going to get a car when everything's in walking or biking distance. And if I need something, I can decide someone to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, people people do that a lot. So I had no, I had no stress. And then I worked at the street market. I worked at the liquor store. I 
bust my ass there, which is my aunt, and I didn't want her to like regret hiring me just because of my niece. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of work. I worked a lot of hours. And I I didn't have a lot to show for it, but you know, I had I was stable. I wasn't out here losing my money, partying. You know, I was partying. I was pizza. Not gonna lie. But I was responsible. All right. So I was I was living life responsibly and then I joined the army. I got married and now I have two star kids and my life's completely changed from that. Like I don't and ever I don't ever want to live back as possible because I ever end up back there, I know I failed. That's what I've always said. If I end up ever end up back there because I can't live nowhere else. I have nothing else on me. Like I have nothing to my name. I know I failed. Yeah, over th- even even if like this ends, which it never ends because it does be dead. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, yeah, because it's back back on oh, my bad. My bad. You can continue. It's not it's it's not easy to go back home for me because mm-hmm. people aren't the same and I'm not gonna go back there ever again. I will find something else. Because you like could that... always you could always go to another place and you could always start a new life and you could always get back on the grind again that's because back home back in the panhandle what i've been seeing it unless you're not going into the medical industry or like construction industry or the sugar you, factory like you're you're gonna do nothing like you have like there is nothing out there yeah. and um and that's sadly a lot of people that stay there and they're not doing one of those three. A they're lot of stuck. them are struggling. A lot of and them are they're... stuck. They're they're struggling. They don't. They're stuck. They don't know what what they want to do. And and I'm not oh, hating boy, on yeah. them. Be, yeah, the, the, I'm not hating on them and talking shit about them. It's just it's just sad that they can't leave. And when and then going back and you see that you're like that's this is sad that Rough, yeah you know, people that I grew up with. I'm seeing struggling. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm struggling too. But you go back and you're like, with like Ivan. I mean, I, I'm glad he's doing better. But when you said he's homeless, it's like, shit. This Back then, he wasn't. Now he's, well, we, one, one, he was homeless. If let's say we talked when that happened, it's like, well, that's sad. Like, I knew him. And look what he's at now. Like, it's, it's a lot rough, of that shit yeah. just changes. A lot of that shit just changes. And, yeah, but I'm really proud of the person that he is now because because a lot has happened to him and for him and he's doing so much better. He and it's also to. and it's it's always that slap in the face. It's always how far rock bottom do you have to go Before until you, you realize until you realize something needs to change. Like with me, um, with me not truly knowing what I wanted to do and. And I'll be honest, I mean, I have, uh, like, my, I mean, I need to know how to, like, truly budget because, you know, in the household I grew up with, never, we never really had, um, yeah, they told us, they told me to save, but they never really did it themselves. So that's something that I've always been struggling with. But with watching all these financial YouTubers and whatever and uh, with real estate, I was telling myself, I'm like, um, once... I closed my first deal and whatever money it is, whether it be like 3,000, 4,000 or hell, 10,000, whatever the deal may be, any debts that I have, any bills I need to pay, I'm going to pay everything off, set aside what I need to and start budgeting because if I have, if I have that amount of money and I'm still working, um, then that's when I can finally look back and say, oh, I don't have to keep taking out. Because with Target, they have a thing called daily pay. So after every shift, the, well, the day after your, your shift. You can take out a certain amount of money, and that's what I've been needing to do because of how much it's like, oh, bill after bill or whatever. And yeah, it's like and one... you live in a really expensive place too. Yeah, and so then it's um, so once I get into real estate, I start closing my first deals, and then hopefully podcasting does well. My you and I'm able to do well, and like YouTube and all that. Um, I just kept telling myself, what whatever my first deal is that I close. I'm going to pay off any bills, pay off any debts, get these collections out of, off my ass, do everything. And even if I'm left with like a thousand, two thousand bucks left, 
budget it, keep a certain amount, and then just put the other in the savings and start, like I said, and just start budgeting and start teaching myself. Okay, now you don't have to keep taking out money out of Target anymore. Every day, it's making your check small as hell. You don't have to do that anymore. You can finally work. And then if, let's say, I just, I start doing really well with everything that I want to do, leave Target. And then right there, I feel I'd start, I'd start be able to budget better because I'm not working eight hours a day and whatever. I'm working, yes, I could be working like 12 hours a day, 12 plus hours a day. But it's, like, for myself. So if I want to stop, I mean, real estate, I can stop and get a break. But, like, at work, if you stop and it's not your break yet, you're probably going to get in trouble. Yeah. And you know, and it's just, like, yeah, I want to be, you know, I want to make a name out of myself. So um, when, you know, whenever, hell, if I'm ever in the future a guest in a podcast, and they ask me where I'm at. I'm like, oh, I live, I'm from a small town of 850 people. And they're going to be surprised. But I go back home and people know me. They're like, oh, I, I have heard your podcast before. Oh, hey, I've seen your YouTube videos before. before. Or, hey, you know, you're, you're that one real estate guy. You know, like once get my name out there and once just, you know, just once I start doing what I can is when I can finally, like, Feel better, be relaxed, and honestly, I mean, be have that financial freedom. Do I want to be making the millions? Fuck yeah, I do. I guess, and that's on everyone's mind. Um, but right. you know, but it's also one of those things where it's like, what do I need to do now to get there, in order to change it? Because if I just keep this same habit, and if I don't move forward with like the podcast, if I don't do anything. I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna be, be in the same position, and I'm not gonna get the car I want, get the house I want, go to vacations whenever I want for how long I want. I won't be able to yeah. have any of that. Cause like this summer, last summer and this summer, I haven't been able to go to vacation, and it sucks. It's just yeah. work, 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 work. Sucks ass. But that's, that's the one thing I like about the army is like it's it's easy. It's not. It's not easy, easy. It's like not everyone's gonna be able to do it. So it's not for everybody. Not everybody can handle the constant change, the constant adjusting, the constant, um, you know, stress. Like it's it's, it's, a, little, it's a little bit of stress, you know, or like you know the constant. Hey, you have to go to California for training. You have to go for a nine month one deployment. Oh hey, surprise, we'll repeat. Mm. Right, so that that part is stressful. Yes, it sucks, but everything else, like the only thing I really don't like, is that I have to wake up at five thirty in the morning to go run two miles with some guy that's like a great runner while I'm a cripple. <laughs> like oh, you're I'm like with your hip. Yeah, like they they don't make me run. Like, they understand the situation, so I'm thankful that I have. Great leadership. I do have good leadership. Mm -hmm. So people think my leadership is toxic, but personally, they have never done anything wrong to prove that, hey, my leadership is the worst. No, my leadership is great. They look out for me, they stand up for me, they support a lot of my issues. It's like I have a problem, I could tell them, and they're me like, okay, what do you need? And that's what a lot of my leadership is, and that's what a lot of leadership in the military and just in general leadership should always be there for their subordinates but yeah uh, that's what i like and i love that you know i get to do my job and i'm not doing it right now because we don't have our vehicles yet they're on a boat so when they get back and we get our vehicles we are able to start working again and start fixing our vehicles like we got our vehicles up to 98 percent Full, full mission capable with a team of like six mechanics, so five mechanics, and we have 80. No, we have like 110 pieces of equipment. Jesus, so we, we were out there in the desert doing a lot of work, and so there's like three mechanics, four mechanics. So I first got there, it was me and one E5 that were 91 Bravos that were mechanics. 
so it was it was different but i gotta learn a lot i do my job and i love i like what i do i really mm-hmm. do and that's wow like, what helps to be doing with real estate as well like no matter like yeah it might be tough to get my start closing some deals but once i'm able to close deals and shit and you i start get getting comfortable yeah get the hang of it and i know what i'm doing and leaving Target, because I've worked retail ever since I've been 16. I'm 21 yeah. now. And so I'm just used to that type. And so leaving that, and yes, I may be working longer, but I could be working with a bunch of other great realtors, other great people, and not just toxic management, toxic management, toxic coworkers. It's yeah, like, and, and me- that's the one thing with retail that is hard. Is a lot of people are toxic. A lot of people don't give a shit about other people. They're not... Yeah, because- they're just focused on themselves. I mean, I don't blame them, but they are, they're just toxic. They're terrible people to work with. I mean, I haven't like experienced zombies. that, but I didn't experience that where I worked, but I've heard a lot of stories, like, where I worked in the deli, my main team, we'd be great, uh, but the new people would kept bringing it on, they kept getting fired, or they got arrested, or some shit like that, or they just went missing. So we lost a lot of people. Like I had to train like four people, and I've only worked there for like two months. Yeah. It was rough, but the people that trained me, the people I worked with, like on a regular basis for those eight months, they were, they weren't bad. And where they worked at the liquor store, it was pretty great. I had a great time at the liquor store. They were not toxic people at all. I think that that community was better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I right. have the stress of like my manager, my uh, supervisor, and like the so Safeways president, the like for the Denver area, they would come mm-hmm. down once a month and they inspect. And you know what? The deli was the only one that ever passed inspections back to back to back to back to back to back. Every time. Never got failed while I worked there. So we busted our ass. That's good. And, yeah, toxic leadership and toxic coworkers are terrible. Yeah. It makes, makes your job a lot harder. Yeah, and that's why I'm uh, hoping once I'm able to work for myself, basically not only obviously be self-employed, but then branding myself out there, obviously with the with real estate, with the podcast and YouTube. Um, you know, if I'm able to... to take some time off and i can do it i can do it i don't need to wait for someone to approval and then having that financial freedom if i can finally drive a car that i a new car that i've been wanting without it without me struggling at all to be paying for it and me just chilling on the couch and be like hey you know what or maybe just doing some stuff but or going grocery shopping without budgeting just saying you know what let me get this let me get that let me get this let me get that and then go to the gym like relax and then go to the gym because I haven't been in the gym in, in a bit because, um, but again oh. with just uh, you know with how with everything that's been going on, um, that I have technically I have a gym membership that's on pause until I've paid most until I paid it and then I can finally return back. But it's also with Target. If I don't work at four in the morning, I work at ten. Maybe sometimes six. And what I like to do is I like to go to the gym early. Be there by 6, 6.30. It's quiet. Barely anyone's there. Do my thing and I'm done. But when I am at work from 4 to 12.30 or 6 to 2.30, it's like, well, I'm there and I'm like, well, like, and once I'm done, it's I don't want to go to the gym because that's when all like the snotty bodybuilders the snotty people are there like the the ego the ego lifters and the ego teenagers the ego college kids and i was like i don't want to be there when they're there because then it gets annoying and i'm like and then obviously eating a lot and all this and i've just been getting a lot of weight and i gained a lot of weight i gained back the weight that i lost and and then some and it's like yeah it's not it's not good but I hope again once I'm able to be working for myself and making that money, you know, I can wake up. That workout time in your schedule. 
Yep. Yeah. Just wake up whenever I need to. Go go to the gym, do what I can do, come back, shower, go visit my clients, go see my clients, go to the offices. Um, and then in the afternoons, get ready for maybe a podcast episode, get ready for this or whatever. And it's like I'm doing what I'm what I love. And then it's my and then on, I can choose a day off and then relax. I can just chill in the apartment if I want to go out to eat without it hurting. Go to go out to eat. I want to go to Omaha for God knows whatever reason. I go to yeah, Omaha. Yeah, just because you want to. Yeah, just because yeah. you just because I want to go to the Apple Store, maybe get myself a new Apple Watch or something. And it's not where I'm like, oh well, I would, but gas, and then I have to put gas in. If I put gas in, I'm not gonna have. There's be no reason for me to go there and. Yeah, and I don't want to be. Yeah, that, I don't want that to happen. You have the flexibility to be able to spend what you want to spend without having to worry about the consequences of it. Mm-hmm. And then, because I told my mom, I'm like, once I'm making great money in real estate and everything I'm doing, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to McDonald's without using their app to their app of coupons because that works so well. But two. Uh, I told her, I'm, I'm going to take you to Walmart or Target, and I'm uh, literally legit. I'll tell my sister. I'll tell my girlfriend and I, and me. We'll all four of us grab carts, and I'm going to tell you, okay, we'll go grocery shopping. Get everything you want. You want to get two gallons of milk? You want to get all this shit? Put in. Don't even worry about what the price is. I'm taking care of it. Put it and just put it in the in the cart. Just put it there. You want clothing? Go get clothing. Go put it in the cart. Like, just go do it. Like, don't even stress about the money. Just go do it. And yeah, take it to take it to the Sam's Club so you can bulk up. Yeah, I'd like be doing just shit like that. And then with my grandma, uh, the my mom's mom, uh, she's I guess say like super super poor. She she lives in Mexico, and so what I want to do is, cause I bank with Chase. And tomorrow I'm gonna get on a phone call with them to see if I'm able to do a foreign exchange at a branch, because here in Lincoln there's a branch. And because uh, my goal is to take, when like taking out five thousand dollars out of my account without it hurting me, and converting it to Mexican pesos, which would be close to a hundred thousand, and head down there and give it to her and just say, you know, here. Don't even worry about having to pay me back because I know you won't be able to. Like, just here, take take the money. I, this is for you. Like, just fucking keep it. Like, this is for you. And, you know, take care of people that take care of you. Yeah, and then uh, right there, she could she would probably be bawling, but she can finally go get some groceries without having to starve herself or whatever. Right there, she's got food. She's got money. There we go. And then I head back and I go to McDonald's. <laughs> Enjoy a McMuffin, a sausage McMuffin or some shit. But um, yeah, it's something to miss with McDonald's, so you need to have that in the desert. Damn. Yeah, McDonald's on base. Yeah, Burger King though, and some shitty ass Taco Bell and trash Popeyes. Right. Okay. Yeah. We had an Italian restaurant and we got Starbucks. I got Starbucks. <laughs> that's where that's where most of my trip went to. Got the Bucky stars. There you go. Because the Starbucks was nice. It was it was really relaxed. But they had it was twenty four hours. Like if I couldn't sleep at night and I wanted to get out the room and I wanted to call my husband because like we were it's like an eight hour difference, eight hour time difference. So dang. Right now it'd be like seven a.m. Oh yeah, no, that suck ass. Yeah. <laughs> And like the summer, the heat in the summer is terrible. Oh my god! Like when we were getting ready to leave, because I just got back in June, right? When we were getting ready to leave, it was like 120 degrees by 11 a.m. 100 mm. by it was. It, it didn't cool down until 5 a.m. It was like 100 at 105 at 7 p.m. at night. That's no. I won't be. No, that's nasty. It was terrible. Yeah. And that's. It, I just. It, it was what it was. Well, thank God the AC here works fantastic. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. And the sandstorms, sandstorms sucks. 
but you know, I'm just glad I didn't see Todd Bell. Like, it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. They got shot at. So. Hey, fuck it, but that's, but yeah, I mean, that's my goal of, and then obviously with like the Tesla and whatnot, and then able to take my girlfriend to vacation without having to say, oh yeah, we'll go vacation, but let's just wait till like spring. We'll just, we'll just wait till spring until we can afford it to save all that money. Say, so, you know, fucking pack your bags. We're leaving tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah, that's just, that's just me. Everyone has their own shit. But I'm glad you're doing well. Glad you're doing good. Glad you're pushing, th- glad you're pushing through. And yeah, you're going to stick with the me. army. Fuck this shit. <laughs> I, I'm going to do my contract and yeah, I'm just going to see how it is. Like if the economy is trash, I'll send and I'll see I can do. But if I can afford to get out and the economy is okay and it's better, I'm going to get out. I'm going to go back to Florida because you know, where my husband's family is is where I'm going to go. I'm not going to go back to mine. I mean, I love him, but I'm not going back there. Wow, to Florida. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Florida's just, it's all right. It's not me. It's too hot. But, you know, it's just all right. You know, I had a, I had a moving chair to Kansas where he never had an actual winter. He had his first winter without me. And my son did, too. And they... You know, they did all right, but I don't want to have to keep him in a place where he is foreign to mm-hmm. the place. Like, he's not used to all this big shit here. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Ford is wild. They got, they got crackheads and alligators and shit out the ass. It's weird as fuck. I just seen a video. It's probably crack- interesting, though. Probably yeah, interesting I just seen a video that got, like, a... It was like a Weird looking shark, and it was on his boat, and it creeped on his boat. And he just grabbed it by the neck, and he was like, Look what you did, you nasty boy. Like, yeah. You just grabbed a shark? They're different breeds. <laughs> they, 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 I was talking to this guy, like, and he was like, um, It was like, Yeah, you know, when you see like alligators climbing on the sidewalk for the pavement, it's just another day, it's normal, don't freak out, just don't need to panic. <laughs> No I'd be scared of shit. <laughs> I mean, my Nebraska like, self would cry. My Nebraska <laughs> self would cry. <laughs> I'm like, there's no need to panic. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, there's a goddamn alligator on the sidewalk. The fuck you mean? Don't panic. Yeah, he's just like, you know, it's just a normal day. Like, one day he was on uh, FaceTime with me. He was like, well, I woke up this morning and there's like three black bears in my trees. I'm like, and you ain't stressed him? He's like, yeah, no, it's wrong. What happened? So, like... Some like, goddamn pets. And, like, there's turtles that run through the yard and shit, and they're, like, endangered, and their dogs will go eat the turtles. <laughs> what? It's just... It, it's a they're, Noah's Ark out there. Like, they're wild they got every type of... There. They it's got like, every type of animal. It's, like, the Australia of America. I, I, Australia is wild too. Australian men and Florida men. Yeah, they're Australians. All, they're they're different breeds. Put them in the ring. I don't know who's gonna win. They're different breeds. They're they fearless. Might, they might come out friends. <laughs> they're fearless as hell. They might go wrestle an alligator together. Hey, fuck it. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. Exactly. I do it. You know, when I get out, when I get the army, I'm going to go do a, a apprenticeship for a boiler maker. It's a welding type of welding. But I still want to weld. Um, I want to do, a, like, a four-year apprenticeship. It starts off with, like, $20 an hour for an apprenticeship. And then when you're done, you start off at, like, $30 an hour. And you Damn. can go out there. You can go in there. And, I mean, that's not bad. Like, you get a four-year apprenticeship and your start pay is 20 bucks an hour. Like, that's great. That's more than I'm making right now. As an army soldier, but, you know, whatever. But it's decent to me. I'm like, okay, you know, I can live off of that because where, we, where you live in Florida isn't too expensive. Mm-hmm. So if we get to live in, around that same area and I'm able to get an apprenticeship around there, even if I have a job, like, 
30 minutes to work every day. I don't mind that. But mm-hmm. we can afford it, you know. And if he is, if his little business kicks off, he's going to be doing all right. He'll be doing better than he is right now. You know, he's starting off right now. We can afford to support his business adventures and all that. And I don't, I don't mind it, you know. He's doing what he loves. He's getting paid for it. And that's I, good. That's good. I, I, yeah, like I don't really care about it. It's like I can afford with or without his extra pay. Like when we first moved here, he wasn't working, and I was able to afford it. We were struggling, sure, cut the check, sure, but we were able to make it. Just like us. Just like right now, even though right now we we are struggling. Um, but I hope with doing what I want to be doing with again real estate and everything, and it hope and I hope it pays off. We won't be struggling anymore to where it'll be to it'll be to the point where rent is like, oh yeah, I forgot rent was due today. And oh already they already took it out of my account. Guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, right now we're like we pay we pay rent and most of our bills month ahead. Like everything's paid a month ahead. So if we have an emergency, we'll be taken care of. That's 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 what he's always so my husband's a lot older than me, he's like thirty one years old. And He's got a lot of financial stability um, and knowledge, so he always makes sure, like, I mean, I make the money, but he makes sure the bills get paid, he makes sure the debt's paid off, he makes sure mm-hmm. everything's taken care of. All I'm doing is bringing home the bread for him to sit out. Like, that's, that's, that's it, you know, he's taking care of everything, everything's taking care of, as long as I know that he's making sure the bills are paid, I don't have anything to talk about. When it comes to being stable. Uh, that's that's good to hear. That's good to hear, though. Everything's good. Yeah. Well, well, that's good to hear. I don't really know what else to talk about. Uh, I don't know. I had to wake up in five hours. I got a five hundred. All five hundred. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll let you go to bed. Um, I thank you. Sorry Thank for you. again for um coming so late. I mean I it's okay. Um, Don't worry. I was like we went to the dairy my girlfriend and I went to go eat at Dairy Queen and it took forty minutes to get our food. I mean, granted it was busy, but the food they first gave us was not the right one. Then we were waiting and then so my girlfriend decided to stand up and, you know, wait for the food and the worker has the audacity to ask us, Have you guys gotten your food yet? We're like that's what we're you gave us the wrong food that's what we're waiting for is for our food Mm. and so then you know she's like okay you know whatever we're waiting again another 15 minutes we go back and it's like we show her the receipt like is it almost done and and the guy's like what'd you have again i'm like yeah i went to the wendy's here the other day to get like three things right (laughs) And, like, I get it, you know, they just took out the Wendy's. It's got two drive-thrus now. And, like, it wasn't that packed. It wasn't that busy. But a lot of people aren't working here right now. I don't know why. Like, everyone's hiring here. Everywhere I go, they're hiring. Um, same, but, same here. Everywhere you go, they're hiring. I mean, it's a small, it's not, it's like Scottsbluff size. Junction City is Scottsbluff, basically. Just as ghetto. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Yeah, you got you got down the street and there's like red lights and blue lights. I'm like, okay. Whatever Damn. dog. <laughs> it's 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 wild here. It's great. Um I mean, it's like a military fuck. ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh um, God damn it, Emily. But all right, I'll let you go to I'll let you go to bed since you're gonna need to go to bed. Uh, yeah. And I can live off of a few hours. It has to be twenty four hours too. Oh, you'll be fine then. <laughs> Always. But all right. But well, thank you for thank you for taking some time off and doing the podcast. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be a guest. Alrighty. So it's gonna it's like this will be Thursday's episode. So you won't see it till Thursday morning. It's like so five o'clock or oh five hundred, how you just know it. Don't worry, I know how to hear you. AM. AM. Okay. 
referring to. You are right. It was a TM-1700. I know. I know. I know military. Don't worry. Don't <laughs> I never use it. Okay. But hey, fuck it, right? But all right. Well, you have a good one. Alrighty. Bye-bye.